Hi everyone, this is Sarah Fezio, and today I'm going to show you my latest project called Desert Tiles. Today I'm going to be working with some 4x4 canvas panels. Now you can get these canvas panels in a 12 pack and they are 4 inches by 4 inches. Hopefully you can see that. It says pack of 12 and I got these online at Amazon.com and they're made by US Art Supply. So right now I have two canvas panels that I'm going to be working with. You can see I'm going to use some golden ultramarine blue and some Liquitex unble unbleached titanium. Unbleached titanium. Now the idea here is that I'm going to take these colors and place them on the canvas panels using my Robert Simmons titanium brush. Hopefully you can see that, that's a number 10. Ideally, I'm going to take my canvas panels, I'm going to apply a heavy body paint, and then eventually I'm going to pour uh, using Liquitex pouring medium. I'm hoping to see if a base coat of heavy body acrylic will actually alter the way the pouring medium uh, flows or sticks to the canvas. I'm also hoping that you'll be able to see less of the tooth of the canvas panel without applying first another coat of gesso. I might also use some Prussian blue, so I'm going to go ahead and add a bit of that to my palette right now. And then of course I'm going to add some titanium white just in case I want to lighten the Prussian or ultramarine blue. So the first one I'm going to start with is one of the panels. I'll just wet my brush, get a little water on it, and wipe it off on one of my rags. And we'll start with the first canvas panel. The first canvas panel is just going to be unbleached titanium. You want to make sure you cover the sides, get the paint on the sides, even though they're maybe a quarter of an inch thick at most, you would still have white canvas showing. Now the second one I'm going to use Prussian Blue and I believe Unbleached Titanium. And I want to get an ombre effect from top to bottom. So I have Prussian blue, there's a little bit of white in it because Prussian blue is almost black and I want to be able to see the blue, hopefully, this is what I was planning for anyway, to see some of the blue through the pouring medium. And I'm grabbing my unbleached titanium now, starting at the bottom. It's okay if there's a little bit of blue in there because at this point I was actually planning on having what would appear to be a sky and then a ground color. I was going for a desert type appearance. So I probably spent too much time going through and putting paint on my canvas panels, the heavy body paint, but I wanted them to be smooth. Remember, I didn't want a lot of the tooth showing because in previous pours or times that I've used um, pouring medium, I can see the tooth of the canvas when the pouring medium isn't very thick or if it's a lighter color. So again, I'm just trying to get a nice blend, an ombre effect on my canvas. So I have the one with unbleached titanium and then 
the Prussian blue to unbleached titanium ombre effect. So I decided that I was going to go ahead and use a third panel with the ultramarine blue and I accidentally got some white in there I think somewhere um, but I start with white at the bottom right there I should have actually not have white on my brush but that's okay because again we're pouring over it again remember to cover the sides of your panels they tend to move around so you may get some paint on your hands and just make sure the sides are covered, that you like the transition. You can tell a slight difference between the Prussian blue and the ultramarine blue. The ultramarine blue is just a bit brighter. So when you're done with these three, you're going to have three options for when we pour. And we're just going to push them aside so that we can work on the next step in our preparation. All of this is planning kind of for the project that we're doing. So I have taken uh, a piece of acrylic canvas paper by Strathmore. It was a 12 by 12. It's uh, 246 pounds. There's 10 sheets in the pack. I just basically cut one into four pieces. And we're only gonna use one of them today. So we'll take one and what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the different inks and high flow acrylics that we're gonna use potentially in our project. So I'll briefly tell you the colors. Um, I'm going to be applying with uh, Robert Simmons Titanium, I'm sorry, Simply Simmons, Simply Simmons number four bright, not Robert Simmons. Robert Simmons are silver. So we're the first color we're going to use is Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. I love that, that's a golden high flow acrylic. Titan Buff, also a golden high flow acrylic. You can buy those at Michael's. You can also buy them online at Jerry's Artorama or Dick Blick, sometimes Amazon. That's um, Vivid Red Orange, Iridescent Bright Gold. We also have uh, Transparent Red Iron Oxide. Uh, raw sienna that's a transparent raw sienna sometimes they separate I wasn't too sure if I'm just gonna use that one so I just kind of put it to the side we have yellow ochre uh, nat fall crimson the next color is burnt sienna transparent burnt sienna. We have deep violet that I'm going to set to the side because I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. And the final color, I had to dig for it, is actually going to be transparent burnt ember, which is actually a darker brown. So the ones I think I'm going to use are on the left and then the other ones are on the right. I'm not too sure about them. And the next process is kind of speeded up. You'll basically see me put some of each of the inks on the canvas. I think that's viv that might be vivid red orange at the top, yellow ochre, or the gold, and then yellow ochre. So I'll go over which ones I'm going to use at the end. And I'm just putting a little strip, then I'm going to add some water to each of them to try to see what they would look like if they were, were more fluid, I suppose. Even though when you use the pouring medium, it looks like it's thinner, it's not. It's going to dry. And you can see that one in the middle is the Nico Azo Gold. That one is a really nice color. It's one of my favorite colors. So then I'm going to put some unbleached titanium on the paper as well as some of the blue. I had to get a little bit more Prussian blue because I actually used everything on my 
uh, palette. I, I honestly thought I would prefer Prussian blue at this point. And then I turn it so that some of it runs down and I can see how they interact with that. Don't use dirty paint water for this. I strongly suggest you get some fresh water, which is what I'm doing right now. You should always keep some handy and extra cups. That's a good tip. So I just add some in like so and see what, it, and then yeah, luckily that wasn't my coffee. If you paint all the time, you'll know what I mean because I dipped it back in the dirty water. So I wasn't sure how I liked them. So I picked up a uh, quinacridone magenta and I ended up liking that a lot. So I did add quinacridone magenta. I'm trying to see which colors I'm going to use. I kind of tilted it sideways to see which how, what they would look like when they flowed together. I was trying to avoid having anything look muddy and that's why I was a little bit hesitant to use the purple. So I know I'm going with the Nico Azo Gold. I know I'm going with the Quinacridone Magenta. Not sure about the red but I am using yellow ochre, the transparent burnt umber, and then the orange and the purple. I wasn't sure, but I kept them out. And then you can see I'm adding more orange here just to see what it's going to look like. I wasn't too sure about it with the blue, but it definitely looked good on the unbleached titanium. Keep rags handy in case you get ink on you. And now I'm going to see what the purple looks like. Remember when purple and yellow mix, they are going to turn brown. You'll have a muddy color. And I definitely did not want that. I wanted some nice, bright, vivid colors in this project. So I'm just kind of moving things out of the way now. The things I'm not going to need, I just put to the side, just kind of going over again which colors we're using. Definitely the gold. I wasn't sure about orange, but or the violet, but I kept them there just in case. And in the end, I didn't use the violet. I was too afraid that if I did add it, it was just going to be a muddy mess, and I really did not want that. So now we have an idea, and now we're moving on to the next step. The first thing I'm using is fiber paste. I have fiber paste and gel medium. What I was planning on doing is putting some of each on each tile. So I'm starting with the fiber paste. It actually dries very light. It's light and fluffy when you apply it. I'm using a palette knife to do so. And I'm hoping that when I actually pour the gel onto the canvas, it alters the way it flows. So it's not, not smooth. And I just, gen just do one side of fiber paste. The fiber paste is on the left. I'm trying to put some texture in there and some smooth. I don't want it too tall. It is going to take it about 24 hours to dry. And then this is Heavy Gel by Golden. So at this point, I'm thinking I'm only going to use the two tiles. So I only did the Prussian Blue to Unbleached Titanium tile or canvas panel and the unbleached titanium canvas panel. There was a little bit of paint in my gel from a previous project, so I was trying to scoop that out. And then I'm going to put some little ridges and bumps in this as well. And you can see when it goes on, the color slightly different. They should dry pretty much transparent. And you can see the texture there that I'm putting on. Since I was going to go for a desert theme, I kind of wanted columns like you would maybe see a rock formation out in the middle of the desert. And that's what I was hoping to duplicate with the gel and the fiber paste. So we just kind of wipe it off, make sure it's smooth how we like it. And you could try this too at home, obviously. You can also, I think you can buy both the fiber paste and the heavy gel medium at Michael's or your local Hobby Lobby or paint store. If not, again, you can order from Jerry's Artarama or DickBlick.com. 
So I don't want them to dry out. I'm just tightening the lid. And I'm briefly showing you that that's the transparency right there. The transparency is on top. Basically, read your label to see whether it's going to be transparent, how fluid it is, whether it's a medium, whether it is a finish, or whether it's something like gesso that you need to apply first. You can actually mix acrylic paint with fiber paste and with the heavy gel. I didn't in this case. I think when I do a larger project, I'm actually going to do that. And I think now that I know what the end product's going to look like, I think I would actually choose Burnt Ember. So now I'm just reviewing the colors I have, thinking about what it's going to look like when I pour them over that. But before I do that, I have to let them dry. And again, the gel medium and the fiber paste, I would say give it 24 hours before you do. The gel's on the right, the fiber paste is on the left. And this is the pouring medium that we're going to use. Obviously, it's very sticky. You can see it at the top of the bottle. And that's what we're going to pour with the acrylic colors we've chosen over our canvas panels with fiber paste and gel medium after we let them dry. That's the Prussian blue tile again. Okay, so I went ahead and put the fiber paste and the gel medium on the ultramarine blue tile as well. Now I've switched the angle of my camera so the words are backwards. I have my tile set out. I have my um, inks ready to go. You may want to go ahead and unscrew the tops and um, open the lids to some of these so that you have them ready to go in case you want to mix more of your pouring medium. And again, I'm referring back to my color chart. These have dried now and I really get a sense. Some of them are too sheer. After it dried, I really liked what the gold looked like. I really liked the gold. and. It mixed with some of the other colors. At the top, there's some gold by itself, and I had tried to put it down with a brush, but it just doesn't work well on its own. You'd have to add another medium to it, but it worked out. Now, I have these foam trays that I like to use as palettes, and these are little plastic pieces that came with one of my shelving units to separate the shelves. So I'm always an opportunist looking for things I can reuse and recycle and repurpose. So I'm going to actually pour these tiles. They're firm. They're not like a canvas. I'm actually going to pour them on these foam trays. And if I use four of them, it'll balance nicely. So I'm going to use four trays. They're not too expensive. I actually got those at Walmart. They also have divided trays in case you were having an event like a barbecue or something and you were going to serve a lot of people. Since this is reversed, the fiber paste is actually the whiter substance on the canvas panel. The gel is more transparent. So I'm just getting my materials ready. I'm going to set them on their trays ahead of time. Because when I go ahead and pour, you'll see I'm trying to conserve my paint. And so what my plan was to have one tile, pour on the tile, and then have everything that runs off fall on to the next canvas panel. I keep calling them tiles, but that's what they look like. They're like little four by four tiles. I'm using some oh. I 
can't remember what it's called now. I'm using like a wax paper, basically. Baking sheet, I think is what it's called. So it does, nothing sticks to it. Tape doesn't stick to it or whatever, but it's something good because to use as um, a mat to do your pores on because it will not stick to it the same way it will with aluminum foil. And I am taking a piece of aluminum foil. I'm actually folding it in half. You can't see very well um, the bottom of the screen, which is actually the top kind of, um, because the camera is now in front of me looking towards me. And I'm basically making that an L shape. I do not want that to run into my lap because this was a smaller project than my last video, I hoped I would be able to contain it on the table, and I did, so having a large surface you're not worried about getting sticky is, is a good thing. So I have two tiles on the foam, sh foam pieces ready to go. I'm gonna set the first tile I'm gonna pour, which is actually the unbleached titanium. I have my cups ready to go, those are reused. And I'm going to show you how you can basically reuse them. It doesn't work with all plastic, but with this particular kind, you can literally just peel off the paint from a previous pour. And if you'll see, I've grabbed the edge. It just kind of peels off super easy. The more paint you leave in your container, the more difficult it is to do that. And I just basically put that in the trash. So now I'm ready to go. The next thing I'm going to do is use my pouring medium and mix up all of my paints. First you set your containers out. It's easier that way. I'm going to use about five colors. Again, remember to have extra containers and extra stir sticks available. Once you mix your pouring medium with your acrylic paint, it will start to dry. I know some people may add water to their pouring medium and acrylic paint mix. And I'm using uh, professional level paints, so I'm not concerned about underbinding. But I did not add any water. And I'm putting on my gloves. I want to protect my hands. If you find you get some of the pouring medium on your skin, you can basically get it off within the first 30 minutes. But if you wait too long, it does not want to come off, especially nails. And I can't even imagine how difficult it would be if you had um, acrylic nails or uh, nail polish on. So I'm undoing all of my paints first. That helps. You can also put the ink directly onto the canvas once you've poured on it. And then you can take your little stick and kind of um, blend it. That's what I'll do. And again, once you pour your pouring medium onto your tile, you can just rotate it and get it covered as much as you want. I'm just gently stirring my ink or uh, mixing it up. I'm not too concerned. I'm putting my pouring medium in now. I'm not putting too much, but I'm putting enough, and again, this is a trial and error, error um, method that you'll become more accustomed to once you uh, do several pours. You'll get an idea for how much uh, the medium you're actually going to need. So what I'm mixing in these little containers is going to be enough, hopefully, for all three of these tiles. When you use the clear cups, you really get an idea of what color you're mixing. It looks lighter in there. It will actually dry more, um, more true to its real color. So keep rags handy. You never know where you're going to splash. And if I actually left that on my glove, it will stick, and then it will stick to anything else I pick up. 
by the time I'll be done, it will be adhered. I mean, it will stick. And one time I poured, it was coating the ends of my fingers so much that it had stiffened and it actually felt like the ends of my gloves were, were, were stiff. It was a very odd feeling. So again, you can put two to three dabs in there. It depends. The more acrylic ink you put in, the less glossy it will be. You can also just use the pouring medium by itself. If you want something clear, let's say we do have a color underneath and you want to have a gloss uh, finish but no uh, color to the gloss, then you can just put the pouring medium itself. It will dry clear and it does not yellow. So that's transparent burnt ember that I'm mixing right there. You can tell it's the one of the darkest colors I'm going to use. I had to open my second bottle. This is my second 32 ounce bottle. Now, generally, uh, local stores will carry some of the mediums, but they don't always have the largest um, containers of them. So I bought my pouring medium online on Amazon. It was about $25. Again, that price can vary just depending on supply and demand. So sometimes it's $32, sometimes it's $25. If you're interested in purchasing some, which I hope you will because you will absolutely love it, then keep an eye on the price. The largest they sell is one gallon and it's $65. So one gallon, it comes in a, a bucket basically. And I'm just gonna start pouring now. You can see I started with the um, Nico Azo Gold, Quinacridone Magenta. We're doing Yellow Ochre. Um, that's Burnt Ember. Now, I'm going to pour, but notice I put the next tile underneath. I'm trying to save some paint here, and I'm just kind of mixing it up. What's interesting is you can actually see, you can actually see the fiber paste and heavy gel underneath. It put it makes little ridges that kind of stick up. I kind of like that. That's why I think in the future I'm actually going to put color into my medium. And now I'm on to the second one. Quinacridone magenta um, I'm now adding gold and some brown and just kind of uh, swirling it around. It's really interesting to see. And at the top, you can see some of the blue shining through. I'm just using my finger to kind of touch the edges. I'm sorry it's off the screen. And I'm going to set it to the side. So I'm on my last one. It looks really neat. You can also do something called a dirty pour where you pour all the colors into a container and once you're done, you then pour that on the canvas so they're not really mixed in a cup. You would need a large cup, but you just kind of pour them in there and then you pour them onto your canvas. Something else I'd like to try is actually putting the medium onto maybe inside the tray and then actually dipping the canvas panel inside the tray. It's still messy. You can still see it's dripping everywhere. Well, I say everywhere. I didn't get any on the carpet and I didn't get any on my clothes. So it is manageable. And sometimes they turn out, you know, they look totally different. You can see the gold kind of um, separating. I actually think that has to do with the fiber paste and the gel medium that I put underneath. So when the paint would run off, if it was a smooth canvas, there's just enough texture underneath for it to alter the course of the paint. So I'm working with these, adding some gold. I wanted them to have a slightly metallic look. And I'm adding gold to the top one. Now, as it dries, you can actually go back and add more if you need to. But the longer you wait, the tackier it will get and it will not always dry smooth. 
you may want a perfectly smooth surface. You use a lot of pouring, medi pouring medium, a lot of, with the paint in it, and you don't touch it. You need a level surface. If you want it to be completely smooth with no canvas showing through, it has, you have to use a lot of the pouring medium. Now, I did three, and I started thinking as I'm messing with these, I still have quite a bit of paint left. I still have quite a bit of pouring medium. I'm ha I'm going to be at the point where I'm happy with what I have. I'm kind of turning them, getting them kind of how I like it. I'm taking my finger now, dipping it into some of the stuff that's stripped off, and I'm trying to coat the sides. Because even if you rotate it and it drips off the side, it doesn't always drip evenly. And it's easier to see on camera than it is in real life which way the paint is flowing. In this case, I didn't really want it to flow at all. So I went, I got another tray. I'm just rearranging things. I figured, what can you do with three? I said, oh, I could put four together in a frame and it might look kind of nice. So the last canvas panel that I'm going to do is just plain white. There's no paint on it yet. Well, you might see some fingerprints here in a second, but I dipped the edges of that white canvas panel in stuff that already dripped off, trying to get some color on the sides. So this one has no texture, and I'm basically adding a lot of the leftover stuff I had. Uh, I did end up mixing some orange and pouring some orange onto some of them. I wasn't sure about the vivid orange, but I did end up using that. And you can see on that uh, panel just above the one I'm working with that there's orange in there. So you can use your finger like I did. You can kind of see I just kind of swirled it around with my finger before I tilted the canvas panel. And again, I just poured it on there, the stuff in the tray. It will not come off of the foam. So if you could find a plastic tray or something to do this on and test it, you may be able to pull those pieces off and use them in a mixed media project. But you will not be able to do that with a, a piece of foam. And that one's very runny. And you can see it's all running one, one direction. And then the fun part begins. You could just kind of go through and fine tune what you're doing. So while I'm not using a brush to do this, you can tweak it. You'll notice on the one on the right, you can definitely see the blue at the top. You can't necessarily tell if it's Prussian blue or ultramarine blue at this point, but you can definitely see that there's blue up there. So if you are going to put a coat of paint, a heavy body paint on your canvas or your canvas panel or whatever surface you're gonna use, uh, Realize that the lighter the color, the more likely it is going to peek through. And here, the paint is still a little bit runny to truly cover the sides adequately. Later, you can go in and when it's a little bit drier, uh, use your palette knife to just stick it on the side. It'll be a little, it'll be really more like a gel instead of a fluid. And you just put it along the side, smooth it down. And you can see it'll drip. So right there on the corner, some of my white was showing. When you touch your wet canvas panel, even though you're wearing gloves and it's super sticky or super dry, 
you can actually peel the paint off. It will pull anything that's been poured on or anything that has been applied by a brush previous to your pour off of your canvas panel. And I think that's what happened in that case. And now I'm applying the inks directly to the canvas panel. And then I'm popping any air bubbles with my palette knife. Again, trying to cover the sides. Because the pouring medium tends to be rather expensive and you do use quite a bit of it, you want to use as much as possible. So I could have probably taken the top two and poured everything on those trays onto the fourth canvas, but I'd already poured everything into my cups and I wanted to use that. So now I'm just kind of putting um, the lids back on my inks so they don't spill. And you can see by this point the ink doesn't spread out very well. That's actually quinacridone magenta. And then I took the fluid and just added some more. This is the fun part. This is the part where you really get to tweak. It's almost like using a brush because as it firms up, you can add more and more. Now, if your painting is mainly firm at this point and you start adding more medium on top of it, it may not be smooth and flat when you're done, which is okay. It will still be glossy especially if you didn't need, necessarily need a product that is completely flat. So the pouring's fun, the, and you can see I have a nice drip on my arm there. Remember, it's not gonna come out of clothes very well. So don't wear anything that you don't mind being ruined. Interestingly, the, the last one, the one on the bottom left, that's the one that doesn't have any fiber paste or heavy gel, and it is, it is very smooth. What looks like raised portions there are actually um, gold dots, part of the gold ink that I dropped on there. It, it's very smooth. And with the iridescent gold that I added, I think if the light is right, it will have a very nice shimmery effect. It will when it's flat, but it definitely will with a little bit of texture underneath. I also noticed that on the one that doesn't have the fiber paste or the heavy gel, you can see more of the tooth of the canvas panel. Now that may be just to the fact that um, there was no paint on there to help smooth it out. So on my gold ink, I have tons of pouring medium on there and I'm just trying to get use the alcohol to get it off. And you can scrub it off with alcohol, but I would not wait longer than 30 minutes to do so. And eventually I'm able to peel it off the lid. Very carefully, without hitting any of my canvas panels. Now again, you're not gonna be able to move these for a while because they are going to be wet. They could run even though they look like they're dry, they may still move. And because it's glossy already, you can't necessarily tell 
Um, I'm just peeling some off my palette knife here. You want to do that also when it's still not too dry. Um, you don't want to move your canvas panels for a while because you can see it's been it's speeded up. This is not at, at uh, regular speed. This is at 300%. So this is the detail part where you're really adding stuff. Um, details, fine tuning it, tweaking it to the way you want. I'm trying to cover up some of the blue. I wasn't very successful. Um, but I let them sit for about 24 hours before I'm actually uh, going to show you guys what they ended up looking like. And I think I'll use, try to get more than just the daylight uh, light on them. And what you can't see from this angle is that on some of them there are drips along the side. So the side, what happens is it spreads out and then it drips off the side and it goes to the bottom and it drips off. Well, I don't want drips on the very bottom, but I do want it on the side. So as it really thickens and dries, that's when I go back and I add that. And I don't think that's on this, this isn't, that's not on this video because it actually took probably 20 minutes or so at least later till I pulled some of the pouring medium that had dripped off and scooped it up and kind of got it on the side. But at that point, it's like a thick hair gel. It's not runny at all. Now at that point, if you pour any more on your canvas, it will not be even. So I do have some yellow ochre left or yellow oxide left. I didn't actually like that in there. I thought I would, but I did not. I would have, if, if I went, when I do it again, I'm not gonna use the yellow ochre. I'll just use the iridescent gold. And this is where you have to not be too, too picky and keep messing with them. And here's where I'm just kind of using one of the stir sticks to scoop the drips off the, off the bottom. Eventually they'll need to be varnished. I don't think there's that much texture that you won't be able to varnish them. So at this point, you know, you're pretty much done. You can start putting your things up. And um, I would not, I would not pour, try to pour whatever's left in your cups out in the garbage. I would just kind of let it sit there. You will be able to pull that off when you're done. And then here you can actually, I'm going to move them so you can actually see all four of them. You can see on the top one now, the blue really shows through. And you can see all the details. If you love these colors together, please like, comment, share, or subscribe. I've really enjoyed doing these four desert colored canvas panels, and I hope you give it a try. Please keep on the lookout for my next video.